So we've seen it twice now. One, it was the FBI. The second one, it was former intel officials. But the same objective to go after President Trump and keep him from being president. There needs to be prosecutions. There needs to be accountability. And the FBI has got to be overhauled now top to bottom. It's got to be completely reformed. It cannot go on like it is. A Fox News alert. House lawmakers calling for special counsel John Durham to testify on Capitol Hill next week after his scathing report reveals that the FBI had no factual evidence to investigate former President Trump for colluding with Russia in 2016. Vivek Ramaswamy is running for president as a Republican, and he joins us now. Vivek, as always, good to see you. You know, as someone who is running against the former president for the 2024 ticket, how concerning is it for you and really everyone on that Republican ticket following this report? This is deeply concerning, and it just reaffirms a call that I made in early March to say that the next president actually needs to shut down the FBI. This is a corrupt institution that has repeatedly revealed itself to be politicized. The same FBI that went after Martin Luther King now effectively went after Donald Trump. And I think when you have an administrative rot that runs that deep, you cannot reform it top down. You have to actually shut it down. And I think that's possible. And if you think about it at the local level, you have local police and you have a prosecutor. You don't have an investigative unit in between. At the federal level, you have U.S. Marshals and the Department of Justice. When you have a bureaucracy that sits in between, that is a formula for corruption. That is what we see here in the Durham report. The FBI releasing a statement in response to the report, quote, the conduct in 2016 and 2017 at Special Counsel Durham examined was the reason that current FBI leadership already implemented dozens of corrective actions, which have now been in place for some time. Had those reforms been in place in 2016, the missteps identified in the report could have been prevented. But Vivek, how do they explain how they handled the Hunter Biden laptop then? This is selective actual investigation and eventually selective prosecution. That is not justice. That is a perversion of justice. And what we need in the federal government, including in federal law enforcement, is reinstilling a culture of the rule of law, not viewing the law as a constraint or an inconvenience, but the motivation for actual federal law enforcement itself. That culture is completely missing at the FBI, prosecuting certain things while making up investigations on others, depending on your politics. That is not justice, and it's going to take a president who leads and is willing to take the actual hard steps, like shutting down this institution and reinstilling a culture of the rule of law itself. You know, but Vivek, how concerned should not just Republicans be, Republican voters, but Democrat voters, all Americans be, because of this 300-plus page report? So look, the same shoe can fit the other foot. As I alluded to, they went after Martin Luther King in the 1960s. So this should not be a partisan issue. I think it's not a partisan issue. We ultimately want a law enforcement agency that is blind to politics. That is not what we have today. And part of the problem is that bureaucracy is so vast. It's still the J. Edgar Hoover building in Washington, D.C. that those people who work at the FBI walk into. It becomes part of the culture of the institution itself. This is not constitutional. The fourth branch of government government broadly is not constitutional. And I think the next president of the United States has a chance to fix it. That's why I've been saying for months that I would shut down the FBI, but still have a federal law enforcement apparatus that actually gets the job done. And actually focuses on helping the American people as opposed to whatever this is. Yes. Meantime, you are one of over 40,000 donors who gave money to Marine veteran Daniel Penny's defense fund. That has now reached over $2.3 million. What does this outpouring of support show you about what the American people are hungry for in this day and age? I'm proud to see the American people actually rising up. You don't just vote every day. You vote with your dollars, too. And I like to practice what I preach. And that's why I've been encouraging others. It wasn't just my donation. I've been encouraging others to do the same thing. Look, look let's take the lesson of this day. Jordan Neely, this is somebody who should have never been on the streets free to do what he did. Abducted a seven-year-old, reportedly assaulted a 67-year-old. If the New York police departments had been doing their jobs, had been allowed to do their jobs, then this incident would have never happened. And I want to make sure that this individual who actually appears to have been taking action for a guy who was supposedly actually issuing threats to others on the train, I want to make sure he receives a fair defense. I think it's important that we regain confidence in the rule of law in this country. And I think it says that many Americans are hungry for the same thing, which I take as an encouraging sign for where the hearts and minds of citizens across this country really are.
Yeah, the system failed not only um, Jordan Neely, but it also is failing this Marine. Um, but I blame the DAs because they're not allowing the police to do their jobs, and maybe they could have taken care of this before. Vivek Ramaswamy, great to see you as always, sir. Yeah.